Okay, right, so this week I want to look at some sort of basic governance principles. We sort of looked last week at the um, sort of corporate aspects, what, what's the purpose of a corporation and so on. I want to now look more at the information government, governance side. And just sort of take us through briefly some of the pretty critical principles so you can then start your research that leads you into understanding quite what it is that's really important. So what are the principles of good information governance? And then I want to connect us to ISO 27002. Now, ISO 27000 it has a range of um, reports or standards from 27000 itself through to about 27010 or 11. I can't remember which, where it's got to just now. But 27001 is the set of processes to get good information security, good information governance, and you can be certified uh, by an external agency to uh, demonstrate that you are capable of meeting the requirements for information governance. Um, sometimes that's required to get contracts, particularly with government agencies and quite a lot of other big organisations. However, that's very procedural, lots of processes, <coughs> it's all very tedious. But the one I like using is 27002, because that provides a whole set of questions. It provides you with the ability to use a scalable information governance process that suits your particular business, your particular operation. So it works with um, people who are individual consultants. It works with organizations as big as Rolls-Royce Aerospace and bigger. It's scalable all the way from one person to as big a company as you like. And it sets out all sorts of interesting questions. We'll go through some of that in a minute. Now, before we get started, we have the CIA principles, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Keeping the data private, which is meant to be kept private, making sure that the data you have got is internally consistent, effectively that's what integrity means, and then availability means the data is available to whoever needs to use it at the time that they need to use it within organisational constraints. <coughs> so first of all, before we go into 27002, I want you to start a little bit of research. I'll come, we'll go through the whole process um, and then we'll come back to this as we go into the research. So what I want you to do to begin with is to find a whole set of resources, build your working bibliography as always, about good information governance principles and practices. So find lots of sources, and here's a couple of things. A good key phrase would be information governance principles. The other thing is that academic sources are not going to be terribly valuable. You might find something through Web of Knowledge or ACM Digital. However, you are much, much more likely to find some really good resources through the industry and business sources, uh, industry and business websites. Uh, they're going to be much, much more valuable in this one. <coughs> And part of the reason is there's, no, there's less useful work being done and published in the academic sources whereas compared to business sources because that's the practices for today. Um, so a couple of hints there. <coughs> well, once you've got a range of resources, then start thinking about a couple of questions. Which business sectors provide most information about information governance? And that will become quite clear as you do your research and look at your Google and Google Scholar uh, reply uh, res um, sort of results. It will become very, very clear that there are certain industries or business sectors which provide phenomenal amount of resources and others which don't really figure at all. But why is there that curious range of results from different types of organisation. And secondly, think about the second question, which, okay, you've got all of this stuff now. Go back to CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. 
does what you found in your research actually help address all three of those principles or not? If not, you might need to go and do a bit more research to help build up your knowledge. Now, what you then need to think about as well, um, because you'll now need to get yourself a copy of ISO 27002. Have you, any of you ever had a copy of it? No. In that case, you're going to need to get yourself a copy. And I'll show you where to get that in a minute. You go to, basically, you go to the library systems and look for British uh, Standards Organization online and uh, log in through there and then search for IC27002. It's in basically 10 chapters <coughs> or thereabouts and they give you 10 major topic areas that information governance and security is important. And then inside each of the chapters lots and lots of questions at the paragraph at the sort of heading subheading level and then sort of paragraphs inside that lots and lots of interesting and important questions so again connecting from ISO 27002 to this topic area <coughs> and as you you'll need to do a little bit more research while you're in the british standards online uh, you'll want to get copies of I say 27,000, and I would say 20,000, and also get copies of all of the publications in 27,000 series. And remember that through British Standards Online, if you are logged in through the University of Derby, you have access to free access to all of the current British standards or ISO standards, and they are not DRM. And each one of them costs, if you have to do it from outside the university environment, they cost you about £50 per each. So you can get access to all of the useful British ISO standards from in here quite nicely. 20,000 20, is a good one to have as well. Have a look at 20,000, see how that connects to information governance principles and how does it connect 27002 as well to meet those three standards of uh, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. And those three principles actually link to an awful lot in the rest of ISO 27002. The other thing to think of notice when you look at 27002 is to look at section 0.2, I think it is in the latest version, because that gives you three um, foundations for the whole of information governance. One, the first one is risk assessment, and that's how you do the scaling ultimately between a one-man band and a 100,000 person organization. What are the most critical risks to a one-man operator, a consultant? And one of them obviously is going to be losing one of them, because that has your entire contacts on it. It has your entire client list. And if you've got a bigger one, you probably might have all of your invoices and all of your accounts and so on. And that kind of is a bit of a problem. So it leads you then to thinking about, okay, out of the 300, 250, 300 important questions in ISO 27002, which ones are most important in addressing the problem of not losing, or what happens when I lose one of those? So I don't lose my client list and so on. Because most small businesses, if they lose their computers or their hard drives or whatever, they go out of business, they never recover. Because they don't know who, can't remember who their customers are, especially if they're online. They don't know where the invoices are that are, that are outstanding to bring them cash in. They go down the pan. Doesn't matter how much insurance cover you've got for the, the theft and burning or burning of all of your IT equipment, if you don't have your records backed up somewhere off-site or securely somewhere, you're up the creek. It's a bit like, you know, if you guys have only got the one copy of your assignment on your memory stick and a dog eats it and crunches it, your assignment's gone missing and you have to recreate it from scratch. Same sort of principle. <coughs> 
Yeah, that's right. So, like okay, guys, now I'll go back. Drive. <laughs> so there is the, 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 the starting of a research for lots of sources about information governance and principles and industry sources are good to go. Okay. Off you go, guys. <coughs> is that it? That's...